In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics of how to create a rough cut in Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud. I've opened Adobe Premiere and I get this welcome window. I'm going to go ahead and click New Project. And here I'm going to title my project. If I click Browse, I can select where I want to save the project. And for now I'll leave these settings alone and click OK. In order to create a new sequence, there's a couple ways to do this. First you can go to the File window under New, select Sequence. Um, under the Settings, I'm just going to leave it at Standard click OK and you'll see right here that a new sequence has been created. Another way you can create a new sequence is using this scroll bar right here. I'm going to scroll to the project tab and you'll see again my new sequence that I just created is right here. I can also click this new button and select sequence. Again the same window comes up if you want to retitle the name of your sequence, you can do so here and click OK. The first thing I need to do is to add some assets to my project so I can actually create my video. I'll go to my Media Browser tab. Again, if you can't see it, you might need to use your scroll bar. Um, and on the left, it's showing me exactly what's on my computer. Navigating to the, the content. And I'm here, week four, A1, assignment one, assets. Double click on that and I'll see two more folders. And we have the movie clips in this folder and then the other folder contains stills. If you mouse over, you can get a small preview of the clip. You can also just double click on the clip and it'll open it in your source monitor where you can play or scrub through the material. If I want to include this clip in my timeline, which is on the right right here, I can just drag it into my timeline. You'll most likely get this um, warning window that says that the clip doesn't match the sequence settings. If you recall when I made a new sequence, I just left the settings to default. So now I'm going to change the sequence to match the clip settings by saying change sequence settings. Another handy tool is a snap button which looks like a magnet. And what that does is if I drag another clip here and I want it to line up right with the edge of the video clip, you'll notice that it kind of just snapped into place. If I didn't want it to snap, and let's say I wanted it to overlap this original clip by one second, I would unclick snap and then that would allow me the ability to move the clip without that magnetic snap to the edge of the clip. So I'm going to leave it on snap for now. And in your program monitor, this is actually where your sequence of clips that you've actually laid down here will appear. Now I'm going to go back to my assets and I'll add a still image. And you also have several video tracks here. So if I want if I put this picture on top, 
you'll notice that it'll go from clouds to the photo and then back to the second video clip. So in that way, it's similar to Photoshop's layers where whatever is on top is going to be visible. Now, if I want to um, record audio, I need to go to the Audio Track Mixer tab. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the Preferences and make sure my audio settings are correct. So if I click on Audio Hardware, I'm going to select built-in microphone and built-in output because I'm using the microphone built into my computer. And hit OK. Another useful preference is mute input during timeline recording. This was under the audio tab. I'm going to select this. If I don't do this, then it's important that I use headphones, otherwise I'll get feedback, which is a high-pitched noise because the, um, the audio is looping between the microphone and the speakers. So you'll want to check this so you don't get a high-pitched sound. Click OK. I'm going to go back to the audio track mixer. Select record, then click on this record button, and you'll notice that it's just blinking. It's not actually recording yet. So I'll need to hit play in order for it to actually record my voice now. So you can see the recording sign is on. I'm talking, and it's going to be recording my voice. When I'm finished, I'll hit stop. And you'll see that in the audio track below, it has actually recorded my voice. And the bars on the right here are showing the levels of the audio. Oops. If I want to take a closer look at the audio file, I can just double click this. And you can see the actual waveform of the audio file. So after I've arranged the audio and the um, visuals to match each other in the way I want, and I'm finished with the video, um, I will need to render and export the video. Oops. So this red line is showing that it's not rendered, and it's going to just show a low um, quality version. So I will just say, Render into out. So and now it's green. The recording sign is on. I'm talking. Which means it's been rendered. Now I'd like to export my movie. So I'll go to File, Export, and then Media. And then here you can actually select the settings. So I have QuickTime Movie. These are the different presets you can choose. I'll leave it to DV widescreen. If I want to change the name and the location, I will need to click this link. So here I have it in the folder and I'll label it with my name. Oops. And then we're, I'll leave this unchecked so that the extension actually shows and hit save. Let me shrink this window a little so you can see better. Um, these are more settings, but I don't think you need to worry about that at the moment. And then click Export. And this really depends on
the speed of your computer, but also if you've added a lot of effects to your video. It looks like it's all done. So it might take longer. I wouldn't suggest doing this at the last minute because I've had a, a video export for hours before. And here we are. Here's my video. You can see that just that small little bit I created was 98 megabytes. So you can see the recordings. So it's created my video.